Hi, it's good to see you again. Great to start the weekend with Detroit. Hey everyone, my name's Joy. Welcome back to Game Center Crown, and we are playing more Detroit Become Human today. I wanted to show you uh, Chloe's little introduction to us because since the last episode, I have since turned off the console and turned it back on, and I am recording this late on Friday night. So, <laughs> a bit of that fourth wall uh, breaking, that immersion where she's like, oh my god, good to see you again. It's so great to start the weekend with more Detroit. And I'm like, hey, if you could stop reading my console settings, that would be dope. Anyway, but uh, we're going to continue. But uh, yeah, I, I just really wanted you to see that because she does stuff like that all the time. So we're starting Marcus's chapter here, 9.58 a.m. on, I believe that was November 5th, it said. And we are returning from Bellini Paint Store. And we are the fancy android. Deposit package. Well, if you say so. But first, let's look at ourselves in the mirror and we can kind of tilt the camera around a little bit and you'll notice he moves his head. But uh, we had a moment like this with Kara as well. Where we could just stare at ourselves in the mirror. Very interesting. We can also put down the package. Take our uh, outerwear off. Okay. We need to take care of Carl and wake Carl upstairs, among other things. But first, let's just really take this place in and we're gonna see crazier shit as we move around. Have some really large paintings, have some sort of, uh, I believe it's called Kintsugi, that Japanese thing where you, uh, oh, it appears not, maybe not, it's just a pattern on it, but uh, I was referring to the, uh, Japanese way of uh, piecing things back together using gold, usually pottery. We can look around here. But here's something interesting over here. There are little android birds. And you can see they have the little LED indicators on the side of their heads. So it's not just humans that have been made into androids, and we'll see more evidence of that the uh, further we go on. Let's look around a little bit. We can also just take in the artwork. I actually personally quite like this painting. I would not mind having that in my home. Ooh, automatic doors. Look at this fancy shit. But yeah, I just want to take a moment to look around the house here, because when we wake up Carl, um, we need to be focusing on him. This is a nice fucking house. But we can uh, get our breakfast platter ready for Carl here. Fun little <laughs> chalkboard mug. Take the tray to the dining table. And that'll be ready for us when we bring Carl down. You can also just look around at more of these paintings. More of the decor. I'm seeing some uh, heavy rain references over here with the origami. That's exactly what the origami figures look like. Whoa, this gold skull. Hello, Damien Hurst. What else we got? Screen line cast, huh? It's a very interesting place. I mean, we have a whole ass giraffe. Plus the crazy shapes on the ceiling. We have some sort of like... I'm not sure what aqua aquatic creature that is up there, that skeleton. I actually really like all these paintings. We can spin the globe. can also look at this enormous giraffe. 
which, as far as I know, is not an android giraffe. It is just simply a giraffe. All right. Uh, what else can we do? We can try the piano. And also, real quick, I want you to notice that we have a little tear in our shirt right there on a our right but Marcus's left chest. That's from when we got pushed by the protesters when we were picking up paints. We can look around at the books. There are just these very interesting moments of detail that I really appreciate. Whoa, look at this skull. So many fancy skulls. Damien Hurst wet dream in here. And I don't think... Oh, we can go into the studio. So this is the studio. We'll be taking another look at that later. Um, we can also analyze this chessboard over here. <laughs> Checkmate in three moves for silver. So that android brain can analyze. Ooh. That's very cool. I suddenly changed direction with Marcus there and he did that cool sort of like stop. I, I, I do really love how uh, lifelike the character models are in uh, Quantic Dream games. That's something that they've done a really good job with, is just making everything so realistic and in many ways hyper-realistic. Here you see we have a contraption, so it seems that Carl is bound to a wheelchair. Something to keep in mind. Nice little tableau here. We can look at the uh, aquatic creature that I can't tell what it is. Ah, uh, the tea, like... I don't know, man. I don't know what that is. Some sort of whale, maybe? No, it's too small to be a whale. A dolphin, maybe? I'm not sure. See what else. And if you listen closely, you put, you guys probably can't hear it, but I can hear it in my headphones. I can hear Carl snoring. So I can also see into the uh, studio from there. Just making the rounds, making sure I'm not missing anything. Hey, do you have enough busts of deer? Just you know, asking for a friend. Me, I'm the friend. Um, it's a lot of deer, bro. But Carl is in here. We can draw the curtains. There's Carl, and there's his wheelchair. And draw. Oh. Good morning, Carl. Good morning. It's 10 a.m. The weather is partly cloudy, 54 degrees, 80% oh. humidity with a strong possibility of afternoon showers. It sounds like a good day to spend in bed. I did go to pick up the paint that you ordered. Oh, yes, I've forgotten. That is the difference between you and me, right, Marcus? You never forget anything. I actually want to take a quick look around here. I don't believe I've really looked around much the last time I played through here. And it seems that there isn't really much to interact with. You can see there's a lot of butterfly kind of taxidermy and beetles and that sort of thing. Lots of skulls. This guy really likes skulls. We have some masks that look to be of African origin. A, a whole ass owl. All right. Just lots of really cool shit in here, honestly. I really like this house. And you can see he's a cool older dude with tats, man. Have a special injector Shmear system. Your arm, please, Carl. No, Carl. Thank you. Hmm. I just opened my eyes and I'm already gritting my teeth. Humans are such a fragile machine. They break down so quickly. All this effort to keep them going. Hey, what happened to your clothes? Oh, it's nothing. Just some demonstrators in the street, Carl. What a bunch of idiots. 
They think they can stop progress by roughing up a few androids? I hope they didn't harm you. Oh, no, no. They just pushed me around, Carl. I'm fine. Okay. I'll take you to the bathroom now. Oh. So we're gonna pick up Carl here. And I have to keep these buttons pushed down. I have not seen what happens uh, when you don't keep the, bus the buttons pushed down. And frankly, I don't want to find out. I don't want to drop this poor old man. In fact, I'm keeping them activated right now, even during this- Whoa, hello cat. Cutscene. <laughs> I, I forgot about that cat. Yeah, see, because we're still holding him. And I refuse to drop this guy. So we got him showered and taken care of. Look at this fancy motherfucker. He's a sharp dresser. And we can take Carl to Anything the dining table. Anything special on the agenda today? Yes, there's the opening of your retrospective at the Museum of Modern Art. Mm. The gallery director left four messages asking to confirm your attendance. Hmm. I haven't decided yet. We'll see about that later. Okay. What else? Just your usual fan mail. I've already answered. Hmm. So he's an artist. Which should be pretty Any apparent. From Leo? No, Carl. I can call him if you like. No. No, I don't bother. So we're getting some tension here with Leo. We don't know who that is yet. I'm starving. Well, your breakfast is ready. Bacon and eggs, just the way you like them. Thank you, Marcus. You're welcome. So we have a pretty cushy life here. You know, granted we're an android and very much a servant, but still we're treated very well, it seems. Television. I'm not doing anything because I wanted to, uh, focus on that little Russian thing that they're trying to take over the Arctic. Um, that's kind of a background, like, subplot that's happening throughout this. It doesn't, I believe, have any major consequence on our story, not that I'm aware of. But th there is tension between the United States and Russia in this game as well, just as in real life, so... Why don't you find something to do while I finish my breakfast? Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, Carl. So, he wants us to find something to do. And we have a couple options here. We can play the piano. Uh, we can... play chess. And I'm actually forgetting what the last thing is. We have three options, though. Television off. Must have said something upsetting. Mankind is so depressing. Oh, we can Nothing read. greed, stupidity, and violence. 5,000 years of civilization just to get to where we are. Carl's a pretty woke dude. Anyway, uh, the North Pole, why Russia wants it. So what we were just hearing about on TV. Um, let's see. Frozen treasures. Russia's interest in the North Pole has intensified with the recent discovery of precious minerals trapped in the frozen ice, many of which are used in synth synthesizing therium. Android manufacture increasingly dominates both the U.S. and Russian economies, but this isn't just about GDP. Surplus therium reserves would allow either nation to experiment in more advanced Android models, enhancing their military and industrial output tremendously. So therium is a main component of Android blue blood that I mentioned in the first episode. Add to this the strategic importance of the region, which connects Russia with Europe through Norway and Denmark, Greenland, as well as Canada, and the prospect of a peaceful resolution to the dispute starts to seem unlikely. But a spokesperson for NATO is more optimistic. 
Both nations stand to benefit from a stable, productive Arctic region. A conflict would benefit nobody. President Warren, however, recently torpedoed the notion. It's simple. Russia has no business in the Arctic. If the Kremlin doesn't understand that, we will t make them understand. Sounds a lot different than our president right now. Um, Detroit Today. Life found on Titan. Evidence for alien life grows. The Darwin probe, which left exactly 19 years ago to probe the surface of Titan's methane ice, has just confirmed the presence of microorganisms living hundreds of kilometers below the surface, in an ocean of salt water protected by a thick layer of ice. After similar microbial matter was found on Encladius, Encla wait, hold on, Enceladus, <laughs> Encelada, um, Enceladus, Enceladus? I'm sorry if I'm butchering that. Another satellite of Saturn, it seems increasingly possible that life is common in the universe. A NASA spokesman responded to the story a NASA spokesman responded to the story has stated the latest in a series of pointers to life on other planets. Our android expedition to Io is one among many which such voyages that carry a prime objective of uncovering extraterrestrial life forms. Jason Graff, director of humanization at CyberLife, said the company was committed to its partnership with NASA. Our spacefaring androids are specially designed to function on long-range missions of this kind, and we are proud to have our models at the frontier of human exploration. That's actually something really interesting to think about. Because the whole issue with space travel is that it takes a stupid long time, and also our astronauts are exposed to dangerous levels of radiation when they are up there. Um, in a lot of ways, they're, you know, to make a trip like this to Titan, for example, that would not be something you could send a human to do. It would just simply take too long and you wouldn't be able to provide the resources to sustain a human for that long and also all of the radiation that they would um, incur on themselves. So if you send an android who's immune to radiation, who doesn't need food or bathrooms or plumbing, like anything like that, it's very interesting. So you have these very highly intelligent, you know, robots where we've already been sending robots into space, but now they're humanoid and, you know, able to do all these different functions. It's, it's very cool. It's a cool thing to think about. Uh, we'll see complications with that a bit later, though. God, there are so many... <laughs> Is that a lioness? That's sad. Okay find something to do you can play the piano so I think we're just looking at things now is what we're doing and we should get a little pop-up in a second here that says play chess and there's one more thing that we can do and I'm trying to remember what it is uh, I don't think it's watch TV what was it? Oh, read, I think. Probably this. Or we can read a book. I think what I'm gonna do is play some chess. Uh, let's sit down and play some chess. Fancy game of chess? Sure, yeah. Speed chess. Speed chess it is. Um, let's make it a draw. That is a very odd draw. Well, I know that you don't like to lose, but you don't like it when I let you win either. A draw feels like an honorable compromise, no? One day I won't be here to take care of you anymore. You'll have to protect yourself and make your choices. Decide who you are and want to become. This world doesn't like those who are different, Marcus. Don't let anyone tell you who you should be. Let's go to the studio. Some wise words from Carl, and that's going to play into who uh, Marcus becomes as a character as we move forward in this game. 
He has a profound impact on uh, Marcus and how he thinks about things. Gorgeous studio. Look at... It's just a glass box. It's so stunning. But you can see all these really great paintings. I, I really like that one of the girl with the severed head. That's nice. But I can prop him up here. On this little apparatus that'll lift him up so he can work on this massive painting that's behind this curtain. Let's see where we left off. Remove the sheet. That's a big ass painting, bro. Wait for Carl's instruction. Uh, we can clean the studio while he's doing that, and that's what we're gonna do. Clean. Put some things away. Um, I'll be honest, Marcus's uh, plot line is probably my least favorite just because it can be kind of problematic in how it was addressed. Um, but whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I do like his shoes right now, though. <laughs> I like all of his clothes, actually. So we got that going. What else can we clean up? I think there's something over here. Yeah. Bellini paints away. Stack the other stuff up. And I feel like there's maybe one more thing that we can do over here, but first we can see these studies and sketches. Oh, clean. Clean, 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 damn you. Clean. There you go. Because we this is timed. If we dilly-dally, we won't be able to clean everything. And I don't think it has any sort of impact. But um, there we go. Wait for new instructions. I didn't get to finish my cleaning last time, and it made me quite upset. Just watching Carl paint at the moment. So, what's your verdict, Marcus? I like it. Yes, there is something about it. Hmm. Something I can't quite define. I guess I like it. The truth is, I have nothing left to say anymore. Each day that goes by brings me closer to the end. I'm just an old man clinging to his brushes. Carl. But enough about me. Let's see if you have any talent. Give it a try. Try painting something. Paint? But would I... Painting what? Anything you want. Give it a try. <sighs> so Carl very much treats us like a human. He does not really see us as an android. Like, he does, but... He doesn't throw it in our face, you know what I mean? Like, Todd was always bossing Kara around. She was very much a tool. Um, where he sees Marcus as, you know, a helper, a companion. We can paint the statue, we can paint the desk. We can paint Carl's painting. Uh, last time I painted Carl's painting, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint the statue. And so... I just have to kind of touch the touchpad on my PS4 controller here. Swiping it sort of like a touch screen. Exactly like a touch screen. That is a perfect copy of reality. The painting is not about replicating the world. It's about interpreting, improving on it. Showing something you see. Carl, I don't think I can do that. It's not in my program. I... Go on, go. Try it. Grab that canvas. Carl is convinced that we have talent, and by God, we're gonna show it to him. All right. Do something for me. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. Trust me. 
Try to imagine something that doesn't exist, something you've never seen. Now concentrate on how it makes you feel. Our indicator went yellow. And let your hand drift across the canvas. Androids, humanity, identity. Uh, let's go with humanity. Comfort, empathy, hope, anger. Let's go with hope. A light, cheery painting of sorts. But I do think it's interesting that our LED indicator is yellow, which means that we're kind of struggling to process something, is typically what that means. And this just has me scrubbing the uh, touchpad back and forth, is what that was. Very nice. God. Hey, Dad. Leo. So Leo is his son. I didn't hear you come in. No, I was in the neighborhood. I thought I'd stop by. It's been a while, right? You all right? You don't look so good. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> hey, listen, uh, I need some cash, Dad. Again? What happened to the money I just gave you? Uh, well, it's, it just goes, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're on it again, aren't you? No. No, no, I swear, it's not that. <laughs> no, don't lie to me, Leo. What difference does it make? I just need some cash, that's all. Sorry. The answer's no. What? Why? You know why. Yeah, yeah, I think I do know why. <laughs> you'd, rather, you'd rather take care of your uh, plastic toy here than your own son, right? Tell me, Dad, what's, what's it got that I don't? Everything. Smarter, more obedient, not like me, right? But you know what? This thing is not your son. It's a fucking machine! Leo, that's enough. Enough. You don't care about anything except yourself and your goddamn paintings. You've never loved anyone. You never loved me, Dad. You never loved me. Typical emotional abuse from a drug addict trying to get money for their next fix. Like, I sympathize, but at the same time, it's like, bro. Gotta get some help. And that's going to do it for the painter. 61% completed. Um, I actually... Leo intruded to ask for money. Um, I, yeah, that looks like it's the only way that can end. But um, here you can see that we have some different options for paintings. Uh, when I first went through this, um, in my first playthrough, I chose identity and anger, I believe. Um, because I was kind of like jostled from being getting shoved around by the protesters, and I'm like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint about my angry identity, and it was actually this um, sort of impressionistic patchwork portrait of Marcus just staring out from the canvas, um, and I personally I felt like it was a little bit of a cop out then, and I'm really glad that there are other painting options now. I really like the human hand reaching towards the android hand. Um, sort of abstracted in this painting here that we made today. So that's cool. Enjoyed that. Uh, I'm going to back out to the main menu and call this an episode. And also we're going to see if Chloe has anything to say. I always forget that I can pause these cutscenes. Let's see if our girl has anything to say. Hmm? She looked like she was going to say something there, but not quite. She also does this really cool thing where it kind of looks like she's looking at you or something around you. And like she gets a little hint of a smile like we saw there. Or she looks like she's about to say something like that. And we'll see that sort of cross her features more as the game progresses and we start making some 
bigger decisions. She did kind of abrupt shift in her uh, eye line there. It's like she saw a squirrel or something, but um... Anyway, in the next episode, we will be taking care of the next chapter of this game. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed the painter. And uh, thank you guys so much for joining me. I'll catch you next time. Later, y'all.